and welcome to this webcast lecture in the History and Context of Journalism series here at the University of Winchester. My name is Veronica Friedel and today our subject is the late 19th century German philosopher and philologist Friedrich Nietzsche, most famous for his pronouncement God is dead. I have with me in the studio Charlotte Perkis. Hello. Hello, who is an academic specialist in music, dance and performance. I am also joined by Chris Hurry. Hello. Hi. A lecturer of the course who currently who is currently researching Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche was born in Leipzig in 1844. His first major work was The Birth of Tragedy, published in 1872, in which the outlines of the famous opposition of the Apollonian and Dionysian uh, trends in Greek tragedy. Numerous other works followed, culminating in the extraordinary Tus Spok Zaharusta, pub, uh, published in 1885. This strange and disturbing book has had an immense the arts and intellectual life ever since. Famously, his nervous breakdown was prompted by the sight of a horse being whipped in the street. He died in 1900, having spent the last 10 years of his life in a hospital. Nietzsche's work, greatly admired by the Nazi regime and by, by many of the political left, the only people who seem to dislike Nietzsche's are religious believers of all sorts, Democrats and liberals of a moderate and conservative nature, such as Bertrand Russell, who wrote, Nietzsche despites universal love, whereas I regard universal love as the motive power of all I desire as regards the world. Right, Charlotte. Uh, please, could you begin assessing Nietzsche's importance for us? Well, it's a very interesting question, Veronica, especially as we're quite a long way away now from um, the 1880s when Zarathustra and Nietzsche's other works were being written. Um, the reception of Nietzsche is going on still today. It interests me a lot that you're studying Zarathustra and Nietzsche generally as part of your degree. And at Winchester here, I've taught... Nietzsche in courses on modernism in the performing arts for the last 15 years. So um, Nietzsche's importance is there, otherwise we wouldn't be studying it. We're not interested in Nietzsche as a merely historical phenomenon. Um, for me, um, the works of Nietzsche are, are interesting and important because he proposes a whole other way of thinking and being and being in the world and thinking critically about the world. And there are just certain themes and motifs that um, are just so incredibly striking. Um, I found it interesting that you had the Bertrand Russell mention because Nietzsche is, is much more interested in the erotic than in love in the way that Russell was thinking about it. Um, so eroticism, the Dionysian, um, the the um the use of language and language was being poetic and artistic um he's interested in the positives and the negatives about life and how they can be turned around and inside out um he's interested in pessimism being a good thing because you can recover from it and that within all the good things there's a kind of dark side it's just um touches you in a different way I think when you come to a text like Zarathustra um, when when you think about the world we live in today I don't know Chris whether you've got anything to add there yes uh, I think he's had a simply immense impact on both the high art and the popular arts and I first heard about Nietzsche uh, in rather embarrassing circumstances of being a sort of late teenager hanging around with rock people rock music things and clubs and everything and uh, they would all have a copy of, uh, you know, Beyond Good and Evil in their back pocket. Uh, and um, if you think of a, a, a kind of punk rock musician like Iggy Pop, for example, that that song Lust for Life that uh, that you hear in the soundtrack to Train Spotting. So uh, simply all the all these rock and roll people, Jim Morrison, Patti Smith, of a certain age. I'm giving away a certain age now. They they, they seem to be deeply and explicitly influenced by his sort of uh, Nietzsche's rejection of the kind of square life, the kind of straight, boring life of having a job in an office. You should be out doing extraordinary, crazy things all the time. And so, uh, you know, you see that it's, it's essentially a pose and everything. People don't live this Nietzschean life of setting fire to things and shooting themselves in the leg all the time. Uh, but the, people dress as though they're just about to do so, for example, or they, or, or they uh, adopt that attitude. And I think that's very widespread. 
Nietzsche's always wanting um, to encourage the re his readers to overthrow, to overcome, and whether it's morality or um, to be consciously a new generation and um, so different from the generation before. And of course, that was f f um, part of the times in, in the 1880s and 90s. And as then was then hugely influential on on modernist ideas, which as I think what you're referring to in the sort of 60s is, is another phase of that. Um, maybe in some ways that's a much more lively um, Dionysian kind of context than that we than we have today. And maybe may, maybe more um, Nietzsche might appeal more to people in a kind of mental capacity now. I don't know. Okay. Um, could you, Charlotte, tell me who um, who was Zarathustra? Well, in the um, book, also sprach Zarathustra. Zarathustra, um, as a character, is a lonely soul, um, even a madman. Um, he is an ideal, a realistic ideal, though a realistic future possibility. He's a prophet, seen as a kind of inevitable um, becoming of of a prophet, um, perhaps in a Darwinian way. Actually, he's a dancer. A poet he's seen as more truthful than any other thinker and that search for truth is absolutely vital um, in in the late 19th century philosophy from which Nietzsche's thought comes um, perhaps a self-image of Nietzsche um, he does write about Zarathustra in his um, autobiographical I know many of his works have autobiographical aspects but Eka Homo um, Zarathustra is instinctual he's anti-christian he's godless um, perhaps he's not a very fine specimen of a human being. Um, he's a, more of a creature of dreams. And Nietzsche talks about Zarathustra as this superman who is like the lightning that can um, affect man who is perhaps under a dark cloud. And, and Zarathustra is like the destruction of man and also the fulfillment of the potential of man that's what i would say he also calls him the higher man doesn't he at yes. the very end of the book yes and the How higher man who's supposed to dance and raise his legs high as well uh, it's a very physical image of um of this sort of poet prophet um and then the whole book responds to that as as chris was saying earlier about the attraction of language um it's a very highly, highly coloured and ecstatic and rhapsodic form of writing. Um, so in a way, it's almost like a dramatic text, like a kind of monologue in places. It isn't um, yes. dry at all. It is slightly insane from the point of view of normal day-to-day -day kind of bourgeois life, as he would have thought it. I once worked as a garden labourer in a mental hospital, and there were uh, people with uh, psychotic-type uh, problems and they would wander about shouting these things out, these extraordinary things like, don't trust roundabouts or something like that. Or, and, um, and that reminds me of this kind of aphoristic uh, method that, um, that Nietzsche employs. And it has an impact, I think, a direct impact. This is one of the most implausible things that you, you could... But there is, a, I think, a direct link between Nietzsche and tabloid journalism. Uh, in its headline writing style, its, its determination to set out to shock people, to upset them, to annoy them, to scandalise them. That's very much what Nietzsche is like. He's, he's the man who shouts fire in the middle of the concert hall. He, he, he falls out with Wagner because Wagner isn't extreme enough. And if you know anything about the, <laughs> the music of Wagner, it's some of the most ridiculously extreme music in the history of anything. Um, so it, he's a deliberate iconoclast, I think that's a word mm, we, we need to use, an iconoclast, that's a word meaning that whatever is the accepted wisdom, he wants to de find what's wrong with it and destroy it and, and take the contrary view. So that's why I think he's very exciting and from time to time, he goes in and out of fashion, has been really popular with 